All right, let's look at the problem of having a grid work or a table of multiple clickable things, a large number of clickable things. And uh, let's run, an exa run the example uh, first and we'll see what, what I'm trying to do. Um, these are function names for from GTK widget. Um, there is uh, several hundred of them, as you see, I'm rolling down with the scroll bar here. And the idea is that you can put things in here. Are these I just took this as an arbitrary example. Whatever you put in here, uh, which, I, which is being read in from a file, if you click on it, you'll notice over down the bottom here, void. You selected uh, GTK widget set events. Whereas if I did gboolean widget get device. You can see that one selected. So whatever button I, cl I click here, it's, it's being picked up. Whatever you do with that after you picked it up, that's your problem. But I, I am be able to detect and pop. I'm able to populate the, this grid work, and I'm also able to detect button clicks. Okay, which is desirable in some cases. These extra little dashes are part of the GTK system. That when you're at the top of something, they disappear, or in this case, at the far right. Uh, they only appear when there's more uh, on that side. Um, it says more in the bottom here is what it's telling me. There's nothing above. There's more on the on the right here. If I'd gone over here, you see uh, the dashes are down. The, that's how they do it. It's it's part of the GTK um, implementation. All right, the glade. The glade is kind of um, I've, I've simplified this down to just one small glade thing. It's fairly simple. I've got a window as before. I've got fixed as before. I just dragged it in here. It's the larger thing. I made it bigger than this interior thing um, for aesthetic purposes the, um, by going in here and playing with the uh, width request on the on G on GTK fixed. Um, I dragged into GTK fixed a scroll window and you can see it there and it has a size also uh, which is less than the size of GTK fixed of the outer um, container. Okay, into the scroll window, I dragged a viewport. You've got to have a viewport in a scrolled window, or you can't scroll anything. There's nothing to scroll. Inside the viewport, I dragged a grid. Okay, so we have a grid inside the, um, inside the viewport, and in the grid, I had some problems with this earlier, in that it kept reverting to different numbers here. I'm not going to fool with it, but I basically say I've got a row count of one. It doesn't matter. I'm going to change it anyway. Um, I only want one column. You can have multiple columns, you can have multiple rows, you can play around with some of it here. But basically, the, it's just a simple grid. It's called grid one. By default, has one row, or it could be zero, it doesn't matter. Um, so I will, you know, say, um, uh, um, I guess I must have been playing with it someplace else. It's found out I've done something else. I don't know what the message was. All right. Um, Get that off the screen. Um, now let's look at the code. All right. Um, in the code here, a lot of this is, is repetitive. Um, we've got the declaration for the window, declaration for the fixed grid, the main fixed grid. We've got a declaration for the grid, grid one, which is going to be the grid within things. Um, I've got an array of pointers called label to type widget, an array of pointers called button to type widget. I've got the code for both putting labels in the grid and putting buttons in the grid. Buttons are more useful, but they're here, the both codes here. Uh, for the viewport, and then there's my builder, um, the on destroy function from before, it's the function that will be called when the um, destroy signal is raised for the main window. Um, this, is a, this is a handler on row, and it receives a pointer to a button. Um, you will see it in a minute. It's at the bottom. It has to be declared up here before it's used. I have a, in the, temp in the temporary character string of 1024. I've got the row, which will be the row number I'm playing with. Everything else here is pretty much the same. There's the GTK init. There's the builder, same as before. That's where I pull out the window. I do all my... Uh, there's where I connect the destroy signal uh, to the function on destroy. So if a destroy signal is raised, on destroy will be called. I connect all the other signals from the Glade package. From the Glade package. I'll be creating some more signals in a moment. But um, the, and then I, I pull out fixed one, view one, and grid one. Don't really do anything um, with them at this point. But well, I will with grid one further down. But okay, then I read in the um, the file that's con that's got the um, that's got the uh, functions in it, the names. Um, let's bring it up here. Um, Functions.txt. It's just a text file. There's uh, tabs in it, by the way, but it's just a text file. Um, 
it was just some data anything you wanted to put in here assuming it's not completely unreasonable um, so i open the uh, the function for input if it turns out it, it fails the uh, pointer um, the comes back with a null pointer i give an error message and exit otherwise they set row to zero and we're off to the races this is the loop here the while loop with it, where i will um, add the buttons to the grid all right read a line in if you get if it comes back null it means you're out of input close and break that exits the while all right knock off the new line character each of these lines has a new line character this this knocks it off it puts a zero or a null where the um, new line character was all right um, create a row this inserts a row into the grid um, and notice I'm casting to GTK grid because everything was declared to be widget, which is the way I do it. You can do it your any way you want. But anyway, the casting works because it, in fact, is a grid. And the row, this tells you where to put it. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. The row will count. This is the uh, label stuff. I'm going to skip that because it's essentially the same, only slightly differently. different. Um, this is for the clickable buttons. It notes here at the beginning that if you want to destroy a button, use the function GTK container remove, and the container is the grid. So if you remove a button from the container, that effectively destroys the button. All right, but I haven't created any, but now I'm creating buttons. Okay, uh, for whatever the value row is, 0, 1, 2, 3, I am going to call the function GTK button new with label. And guess what the label is? Temp, the thing I just read in. So uh, the label is temp, um, whatever that function name is from the file, and it'll create a button, and I'll get a pointer to the button. The pointer will be stored in the array button. Um, all right, um, now I'm going to set the alignment on the button. The buttons are centered horizontally and vertically. I wanted the buttons left justified. Um, the first number here is the is the just is the horizontal justification where zero means left, one means right, 0.5 means in the middle. So horizontally to the left, um, vertically in the middle. All right, I am I created a row up here. Okay, uh, right up here I, I you know I didn't skip it. Um, I created a row GTK grid insert row that creates a row row number one two zero one two three four. This puts something into the row. GTK grid attach, and there's my casting. And uh, I'm casting into I'm casting it to be a GTK grid. I'm putting the button into it. Now these numbers are um, are messy and confusing. The row this tells me what what row of the grid to put it in. Um, I'm going to uh, switch over here to the actual function GTK grid attach. There's the grid, there's the child widget. You could put anything in here. Um, and then left down here is the column. So I'm putting it in the first column, if you remember. Second one is the row. I'm putting it in row, quote unquote, row. Um, this is the number of columns. The next one is the number of columns the child will span. If it's a multi-column thing, the child can span more than one column. This can get complicated. Um, this is the number of the of, of rows the child will span. So you can have um, so, so your grid work can be um, can be tailored. Not everything doesn't have to go into a single box. It can span multiple columns and it can span multiple um, um, rows. Uh, but anyway, I don't. So it's going into the first um, into the first column uh, in row row, um, and no, uh, it's it's spanning only one, just itself. Uh, all right, now I create a callback signal. This is where I'm creating a callback signal for the clicked, so that if you click on this button, the button whose index is row, the pointer at the position row in the array, that's, that's a button. If you click on this button, um, it'll raise this signal and it'll call on uh, the function on row. And uh, the null means there's no additional data being passed. I'm not passing anything else. I could put data here to be passed, and there's some other parameters I could possibly pass to this function when the callback is um, is generated. What this means is that every um, is that every row, every button is going to go to the same function. UPS needs much quieter trucks. I hope you can't hear that as loudly as I can in the back. Um, anyway, or a muffler maybe. Any, anyway, the uh, my windows are open. Anyway, the idea is that every button is going to go 
to one function, one function alone. Okay, instead of having a thousand functions, I have one function. So every button is going to go to the same place. This is where I increment the row. Okay, so when I get out of this loop, I've created some number of buttons in some number of rows of the grid. All right, I, I never checked, by the way, to see if I got over a thousand. That needs to be fixed. Um, but anyway, for purposes of example, we're not going to worry about it. The labels are basically the same. You create a new label in, into the um, array of pointers. Um, there's the justification. There's two justifications. X align is actually the horizontal justification. Um, and then you put it into the grid. But they're, they're not clickable. But you could put labels in there if you want to just have them um, available. Okay, so the buttons are created. Um, I show all from window on down. I go into my main GTK loop. And I'm off to the races. Okay, what happens when you click a button, any button? You could end up here on row GTK button star B, um, pointer B. Okay, there is a function. GTK, how do I know which button was got clicked? Well, it's a function uh, called get label. You pass down the pointer to the button, and it returns you what was in the button. Now, in this case, it would be the actual function name. And that's the text that's getting printed out. You could get clever, and if you didn't want to use actual names, you could have like a number or something at the beginning of the label, and uh, you would see that when you did the get label, and then you get a number to convert to. You could put the row number in. I could have added the row number in the, in the start of this. Um, would have been easy up here in temp just to uh, uh, to create a row um, to insert the row number at the front of the front of the. Um, of, of the string that's going to be the label of the button, but and which then could be extracted fairly easily down here. But instead of having a thousand callback functions, I've got one. Now, what you do with the information now that you know which button was clicked, it's your problem. Um, it, it's whatever you're going to do, whatever you intend to do at this point, as long as it doesn't take too much time. Um, but anyway, in, in which case, you've got to do some uh, child forking or something. All right, so there's the on destroy, which is uh, basically just calls GTK main quit. Um, and um, if we didn't screw up the glade, um, um, there it is. Um, and you can see there's actually a little highlighting when I move over. That's that's default. That's part of the uh, part of the structure. And you've got the um, and of course, as soon as I click it, you get the message from the back. So uh, if you had, for example, a playlist of a large number of um, music to uh, uh, items of music. Um, and you don't know how many. Uh, you could read them in from a file and add them to this uh, this grid work. I'm sure there's upper limits, but they're probably based on the amount of memory you have. Uh, but yeah, you would be able to um, uh, you would be able to um, allocate them and uh, click on them, and then, for example, start a player or something like that if you want. You couldn't start the player and wait for it. You'd have to start the player and detach it. Have the pl player running as an asynchronous task task. Because then how would you know the player was finished? Well, there's ways of doing that. Anyway, um, that's uh, that's how we do a... Uh, that's one of the ways. There are other ways. This is one way. One Another way would be to simply create a, create a fixed number of items here. Create a scroll bar down the side. And as you move the scroll bar, it repopulated the, uh, the items. This is actually a little more complicated in some regards. But it is... Um, it is uh, it uses less resources. Maybe I'll try that in a, in a later video.